isn't a closet networking I mean, geek. Networking I mean, I'm sorry, but who wouldn't want to talk about that? Exactly. <laughs> That's my opinion. Also, um, two years ago, there was a three. Met at a three. You, you yeah, were on the three years. You, we talked about open flow. Right, yeah. I always go back to this because I keep on saying the mm. props need to be documented. You guys were the first ones with shipping yes. SDN products. Yes, that's correct. First. Yes, number yeah. one. You didn't take the, the credit because you're humble, which is cool. I get that, but... SDN is now exploding. It's beyond explosion. Yes. It's, it's gone from hype with this era. Yes. Now it's in reality. So give us a state of the union of, of SDN. Yeah. Um, and cloud's obviously a big relevant part of that. Sure, sure. So SDN is exploding. It's it's really been a, an amazing journey and it's getting even bigger by the minute. Um, basically, SDN, what we're seeing is that... <laughs> Should I stop? No, no, go ahead, we're live. Okay, sorry. I was worried about your ear. Um, <laughs> uh, so we do, we do it live. Yeah, really. Uh, so it is really exploding, actually. What, what we've done over the last year, remember, as I said, we did. We actually were the first commercially shipping OpenFlow enabled set of switches. We now have 25 million ports out there. 40 of our platforms are OpenFlow enabled. On the switching side, 10 routers are now OpenFlow enabled. We just GA'd our SDN controller, and we had our we also um, announced and will be uh, made available our SDK in the first quarter of this coming year and our um, App Store for SDN. Um, and we're seeing a tremendous amount of continued interest. We've had our first customer now, so we've sold product, our SDN controller in particular, um, and things are moving. We also have a very uh, interesting partnership with VMware around NSX, um, and I think the the, the reality is, is that the network needs to be more responsive to applications. Everything is about the application. It's not about the network. And so really, the network has to change to support those applications, and SDN is the mechanism for that change. So, so we, uh, we were at Amazon reInvent conference. We brought the cube there. It was the first time bringing the Amazon ecosystem there, opening up a little bit, letting us get in there, peek at some of the excitement. But I'll say on the public cloud side, they've been dominating. Integrated yeah. stack, uh, and then DevOps stream. Software guys can push code, all the stuff kind of configures under the, under the hood. So take us to, to SDN for under the hood for HP. You mentioned applications are the, yes. are the key driver. People are buying data centers now, prefabricated converged systems. You guys have, you know, Tom Joyce running yes. that now, which is exciting. Right. Um, but that's now the new market. It's not just buy some rack and stack some boxes right. and per port kind of stuff, although you do sell ports. Uh, so talk about for the folks out there, what's going on under the hood mm -hmm. for DevOps in the cloud relative to SDN? What are the key drivers and, and maybe misconceptions or, or new things that are happening that's enabling right. and, and, and triggering the growth in SDN. Well, so, I mean, what you saw in the tier ones, uh, uh, service providers like the Facebooks and the Googles of the world, they were the first ones that really embraced SDN, a software-defined network, where they could, instead of having a bunch of folks sit around typing CLIs into a bunch of switches, and modifying the network at a very slow pace with a lot of resources, they threw that whole model out the window and said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to basically program the network in an automated way using software, and we're going to make sure the network is responsive to the, the apps we want to run over it for our various customers. And so they completely changed the paradigm within their own environments as a result of, frankly, business was driving them to do it. 
then th what I would tell you is what's happening now is the enterprise is beginning to see that that concept of a software-defined network where you could have the network be automated, have it programmable, have the network be dynamic and dynamically change its behavior is also important in the enterprise. Because you know, as a result of the enterprise now going to the cloud, as a result of the enterprise becoming more mobile, as a result of big data being um, hosted in the enterprise and being utilized by it, all of those things require more automation, more programmability, more dynamic nature in so network. So I know Dave wants to follow up, but I want to just drill down on that. So, for, But Facebook is, first of all, a great example on Facebook. We love it. But that's an application. Not a lot of diversity relative to legacy. True. A clean sheet of paper. True. I can, you know, like, yep. it's basically the app is totally Facebook. Agree. Yep. It's a web app, but there's a they lot of- They could throw everything away and start over again. Yeah. They could. But the enterprises have the same challenge. So essentially, it's, that's your application message. Right. But now they have multiple applications. How, how complicated does it make it? Right. Or what are the, some of the right. dynamics there? Well, Just, we're not advising that people throw everything away and start no, over. No. Um, it's impossible. That was they, a, they'll never do it. That was something that, that Google and Facebook chose. But, but in the enterprise, of course, you've got, you've got heterogeneous environment, you've got legacy network, you've got uh, applications that maybe were built 20, 30 years ago, right, that still are required by the business, still have to run across the network. And so the idea here is that you can utilize SDN in certain segments of your business or your network and, and retain uh, the network infrastructure that you have in place, but you can better it and over time, you can migrate to an SDN-based network. There, we have uh, my migration uh, tools to do that. Um, we have a vSwitch to do that as well, so you can actually create a virtual network across your network and utilize SDN that way. It really, th there's a lot of different options on how to get from where you are now to a, a fully SDN-enabled network and a lot of different paths, and we have all the tools and the knowledge to help you get there. So Bethany, I wanted to follow up, and we've talked about this before <laughs> on theCUBE, this whole notion of hyperscale coming to the enterprise, and most enterprises don't have a zillion engineers running around, so they look for companies exactly. like HP to, right. to develop that. Now, one of the things that I learned at SDN, talking to some of the architects, uh, SDN, <laughs> what I learned at Amazon reInvent, talking to some of the Amazon architects, was they've done a total 180 in that they used to, the whole software defined piece was built on top of, you know, off the shelf, customized, commodity, probably yeah. don't like that word, components. They've done a 180 on that. And, and now are saying, no, we're, we're building highly customized components. We're pu pushing our component suppliers to do specials and, mm. and one-offs. Mm. That's a relatively new trend mm. in the industry. Mm. Given that we see so much of the hyperscale bleeding into the enterprise, is that another trend that we can expect to see? Well, so it's interesting. Remember, we are a standards-based company, but I build ASICs. Right. Right? But and the world said five years ago, those are all going away. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, there's a reason why uh -huh. ASICs are valuable. <laughs> and oops, I guess yeah. Amazon's figuring that out. Um, so there are many things that you can do in hardware for specialized applications, but also to support certain kinds of applications. Security is a good example of this, where an ASIC or hardware enhancement for that is vastly better than a software-based option. That's just, that's the situation. So, so the idea here is to basically utilize the best of both worlds, right? Utilize uh, architectures, hardware-based architectures that can really enhance an application and its performance and utilize software as well for intelligence in the network, automation and dynamic nature you can, you can utilize both. So from our perspective, we don't see there, it's not like it's, there's a battle between those two. We actually think they are very, very complementary and go well together. And it doesn't surprise me that Amazon figured that out because you know, that's what the beauty of you know, hardware enhancement and hardware assist is in a network. Well, for 25 years I've been hearing that hardware's going away and hardware's just a commodity and it's just, never seems to happen, even though margins are under pressure and prices continue to drop, there's right. still a lot of money being made there. What has changed though, and you were talking about your SDK before, is the degree to which infrastructure is becoming programmable right. and the speed at which you're able to do that right. without having the trade-off of, of performance. Of performance, So yes. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and talk a bit more about your, your strategy for developers. Right, well I guess that's, that is the nirvana that we're all going towards, is making sure that the network can be programmable, can be automated, 
and, and still be very efficient and very effective for the, the enterprise, right? So that you get the benefit of having a, a network that behaves appropriately for certain kinds of applications or certain kinds of user types, um, while at the same time, you know, that network being the best in terms of reliability, high availability, you know, five to six nines efficiency, right? Those are very important things. And from HP's perspective, that's, those are all the things that we're doing. I mean, we have six nines based hardware. Six nines, right? This is stuff that doesn't go down. We make sure that products are high availability, high reliability. We also provide ASICs because we believe there's support we can offer to those applications and to that traffic. And at the same time, we have developed products like our SDN controller, like Intelligent Management Center, that bring the automation, uh, the immediate deployment of applications, right? We can deploy an application in minutes versus what would otherwise take months. All of those things are available to our customers as a result of the portfolio we've created. You mentioned NSX before. A lot of people think that you know, the battle is between you know, VMware NSX and Cisco a ACI, VMware is a partner of yours. Yeah. I wonder if you could just weigh in on what HP's uh, thinking is there. Yeah, uh, we don't think it's a battle at all. <laughs> we actually, uh, they're a good partner. And the idea here is that we together have an integrated solution that can provide a customer with great, great uh, both visibility as well as control. You don't think it's a battle because you think the, the direction is clear, right? Is that just the to clarify? Is, yeah, yeah, there's, it's clear. there's, there's no argument. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, so I'm not sure what the argument is, yeah. but what I would say is, from our <laughs> perspective, you know, there's great um, value in being able to go all the way up to the VM and be able to manage and control VMs you know, be able to have visibility to them and decide how you want to do that. And there's also great, great value being able to control the network infrastructure devices that sit beneath them, right? And so what we've done with, uh, with VMware is we've actually federated the controllers, so you get both. Full, rich management and capabilities associated with VMs, the ability to launch a VM, the ability to run a virtual environment completely from a server perspective, and then a full uh, breadth of programmability and automation for the network devices that sit beneath those. So maybe it's not machines. a debate or an argument, but there's clearly a, a disruption where you have the 60% plus market share player looking down the, 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 the pipe at an open standard that's emerging that, yes. that's going to threaten the, the base. I guess that's the, and okay. they're doing everything well, they can to hold argument. on to, yeah, that's, to that we're base. Definitely that's in that's that a argument. dynamic, I guess, it's maybe not a debate. And, yeah, that's, a, that's definitely an argument, but I think one that we're going to win, to be honest. And the reason why is because customers go back to, it's very, you know, pretty straightforward. Customers like open standards. They like heterogeneity. They like choice. They also like dynamic behavior of network. And what Cisco's chosen to do is build a box, which they like boxes, so they built another box called NCME, right, which is sent, or 7,000, or what, I, I'm not even sure, 9,000, it's the 9,000 now. So they built a 9,000 to go into the data center. It doesn't work with their 7,000s, or their 3,000s, or their 1,000s, but it's a box. <laughs> That's a, oh, that sounds like alphabet soup for numbers. So the 1,000 goes with the 6,000, <laughs> another <laughs> box with the other box. All I'm saying is, you, got, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a box. Well, the thing okay. that we're talking about is um, uh, earlier on was the that customers are buying data centers now. They're looking at a little bit big, bigger picture. Yes. Um, so I, you mentioned earlier, well, you mentioned in the previous cubes the quote, which I lo love, which is, um, the network has been the bottleneck. So virtualization yes. brings a lot of power. SDN brings a lot of, a lot of hope there and, and innovation. So with the, with the developer DevOps focus, you mentioned Facebook, go back to that one again, great example. Get that paradigm going into the enterprise. Developer focus is, is critical. So I got to ask you about the App Store yes. and the ecosystem of HP networking. Sure. So what's going on there? What does an App Store look like for networking? I yeah, mean, yeah. am I buying packets? <laughs> Are we, you know, <laughs> you know? So I mean, I'm, you know, is it like a dollar a packet or you know, controller? I mean, not like Apple, but you know, right. Apple paradigm. As we all we all roll our eyes and say, hey, that's funny. But like seriously, networking is a hot area. Yes. There's an ecosystem. Yeah. Explain to folks what Why does that, that mean? Is. What does a developer sure. ecosystem look like, and what is the App Store doing? Sure. And, and who's so playing? it's actually really cool. So again, remember the idea behind software defined networking is that you're trying to integrate the application into the network so that the network responds to the application as the application needs it to, right? So there are lots and lots of applications out in the world today as we know, right? And the idea behind our developer environment is, and our, and our ecosystem is to partner with 
all of the application uh, providers in the world that, that, we, that we live in, right? Like SAP and Microsoft, Infoblox, um, well, VMware is a good example of that. Uh, so several different um, apps providers that, that really want the network to respond appropriately. And what they're doing is they are using our APIs and they're writing applications for the network so that when you launch a link session, that link session works beautifully between two, between two users. Now, as a customer, the way the uh, App Store works for the customer is when they get their SDN controller, there's literally uh, in the management panel a little button that they can push to go into the App Store. And depending upon what applications are in their network, they can literally download that application capability into their network so that if they're running SAP, there's a button in the App Store that says, here's our integration into the network for SAP. Push that button yeah. and S the SAP application works beautifully in their, that is cool. in their network. So you're not adjudicating and no, no. determining what goes in and what so doesn't go into the app We're store. certifying so that certifying, people don't put yeah. things in that are, you know, but once certified, anybody but once certified can the customer can pick whatever they want to pick. So it's real time, yeah, so basically real time provisioning or automation, if yes. you will. So this is where automation's going, right? Exactly. Okay, so that's the automation side, so it's cataloging, almost like a service catalog. Hey, it is, hey. it is. It's service like the self-service <laughs> enterprise for networking. Hey, wouldn't that be great, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a service catalog, idea. that works. <laughs> we were talking with um, Xavier earlier, uh, Poussin from out here in, uh, yes. in Europe, and they're, con they're, they're going to be configuring a full service catalog for the EU. So again, this comes back down to like the flexibility, the adaptability of right. the enterprise. So, so the App Store is designed for folks that want to integrate networking yes. into their app. Yes, or apps SA. into their network. And vice versa, so they play well yes. together. So are they pre-certifying that on their end? They work with HP, how does that work? Just I'm so they, we, as I said, we created an SDK, but these are open APIs. I don't know if you know this, but we just, um, there was just a working group formed within the ONF that is led by one of the um, senior architects in, in my organization, Sarwar Raza, who's now leading the working group in ONF to develop open standards-based APIs for the northbound interface of the SDN controller. So that's what that, the Open Networking Foundation. That's right, that's ONF, now Open Network Foundation. The idea there is to have open APIs, which of course we will utilize in our SDK, so that anybody who wants to write an application to that, to that SDN controller can. That's the idea. So I got it. So we get running out on time, but I want to get some final kind of big picture industry related questions. We'll take our you know geek hat off on networking and go into more of a big picture. Obviously, you know we were kind of joking earlier about you know being networking is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So networking, SDN, and databases are like the two hot areas in the industry that like you know. If you went to a party 10 years ago and said you were a networking yeah. guy or a database guy, oh yeah, okay, move to the next person. <laughs> you weren't that popular, but now you, you, if you're in that world, uh -huh. it's, you're super popular. Um, what's going on in your mind in the landscape, big picture? What is so impactful about the changes going on at the networking layer? Right. And what is this going to change? What, what, what do you see, what are, the, what are some of the outcomes around the corner that, that, that's enabling uh, with software-defined networking? Well, you know, I really do think there are just some very, very large trends that are changing the requirements for our networks. And, the, and those are trends that we talk about all the time, but they are so real. There's mobility, there's cloud, there's big data, there are security issues that we've never been able to solve. And those big issues that, that people want to deploy more mobile devices, they want to move large, large amounts of data that they want to then analyze, right? They, they want to have a cloud environment which in many ways is self-serve for their enterprise. They want to have a secure environment for their users, for their applications. All of those things are huge trends that unfortunately networking for many, many years basically didn't keep up with and almost semi-ignored and now those trends are really demanding that the network change and that the network be responsive enough to, I mean, the time horizon for building a cloud or for putting an application in a cloud is like as fast as you can swipe a, 
uh, an Amex through your, you know, through um, Amazon or through a public cloud, right? It's that fast. And the analyze piece has huge upside potential. Analytics. You can't right have in, a yeah. network that, yeah. okay, well, let's take five months to provision yeah, the network. You just, you, it's, it's <laughs> over. Those let's, days are gone. We're getting the hook here, but yeah. I mean, I got to ask you. I mean, are you as are you as excited as everyone else about the, some of the massive changes? I mean, you're seeing what big days are. We're solving problems that we've never been able to solve before. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about kind of big data action. Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean, I, I have children who are now young adults, right? And I think, geez, I'd love to be you know, 26 years old again and be part of some of these trends that are coming. Yeah. I mean, they're really exciting and wonderful. Okay, we get the keynote hook coming oh. on. We're going to go to uh, Meg Whitman's keynote right now. I think that it's kicking off right now. And we're going we're gonna to take a break and switch to the keynote live. This is theCUBE, Bethany Mayer, the GM and SVP of HP Networking. Always great having theCUBE. Great conversation, very knowledgeable. Congratulations on your success. App Store and more. Software-defined networking has its own app store. I'll be right back with our keynote coverage right now. <laughs>